was concerned about his uh, mental um, condition. Uh, he was very upset, and uh, when we arrived on scene, uh, we, were we were told that he might be in the, uh, a building which is a, looked like a barn behind the residence, at which point, uh, as we were attempting to go toward the barn, it, it appeared that he had a weapon. Uh, we, we backed off, took a perimeter, and at uh, several points after that, there were some shots that came from within the barn towards the uh, troopers. Um, so since then, we have been attempting to um, maintain a, a perimeter at this point. Uh, we made sure that the house, uh, the wife was taken out safely and uh, is now with us. And uh, no one else was injured at this point in time. It appears that he has at least several weapons and some ammunition inside the barn. Uh, and right now we have our, our SOAR team, our version SWAT, um, who's uh, here. And we've had also assistance from the uh, Oneida County Sheriff's and also the Utica Police Department also here. And uh, right now it's, uh, we're just making sure that uh, the scene is safe. And we did alert the neighbors that what we have in this area, right along Route 46 here, uh, between here and Jug Hill Road. Uh, so right now we're just trying to maintain some kind of presence and also um, right now we're, we're negotiating. We have a crisis negotiators on scene. Okay, and speaking with we are speaking with him and we're hoping this comes down to a peaceful resolution. And he let his wife go peacefully? Well, at one point, I don't know if he left, uh, and it's, it's still those are the facts we're still trying to determine, but it, uh, at one point she stayed in the house and he went to the barn behind the a residence where he's been ever since. And uh, right now it, it's been a barricaded situation since then. I've seen a couple of trucks go down that look uh, pretty heavy duty. So what right. kind of... So uh, our SOAR team right now, which is our uh, special operations response team, um, those those vehicles that are used for situations just like this to maintain uh, safety for the officers at the same time being able to um, get close to the individual uh, without any injuries and, and maintain some kind of presence but also allows the negotiators um, an area where they can actually see or attempt to see the person and, and, and gain into that um, um, Kind of a situation where they're able to talk to each other and um, you know, discuss things. I don't know how many um, standoffs the thing you've seen in your career. Is there any way to, to tell how things are going so far, or is it really just a waiting game? It, it is tough because um, there's a lot of reasons why you know these these occur, and it's tough to like anything else. Every situation is different. Um, you, you know, we're still trying to determine what occurred prior to us being called to the residence. So there's, uh, there's other things that could be a factor, a mental condition, um, possible intoxication. You know, there's a number of factors that uh, right now we have unknown. And so right now we're trying to, you know, make so we can get him and, and get him the help that he needs and also determine what what actually caused this disturbance. And what do you want the public to know? Uh, you know, as much as uh, people do see these vehicles and also see the roadway close, that we have the situation under control. Um, we have a numer numerous agencies that are always willing to assist us here. And, um, you know, I realize this the neighbors, it can be an inconvenience, but the reason why we have it staged off and, and uh, is just to protect the citizens because he, we, know, we do know that he has a weapon and, and was fired. And it's for the protection of everyone in this area, um, we've asked, and most neighbors are, have been very, very good about, you know, leaving the area or going away for a little bit. And also the fire department behind me has been here and staged here since 1240, um, just in case we need them. Anything else?